Have you ever pondered the link between your financial stability and your faith? It's a question that might seem unusual at first glance. We often compartmentalize these aspects of our lives, seeing them as separate, independent entities. But what if I told you they are more intertwined than you might think? Let's start by exploring the concept of financial stability. It's more than just having enough money in your bank account to pay the bills. It's about creating a cushion that allows you to weather life's unexpected storms. It's about building a future where you're not constantly worried about the next paycheck. Financial stability is a significant part of our lives, providing us with a sense of security and freedom. Now, let's turn our attention to faith. Faith is not merely a set of beliefs or a religious affiliation. It's a profound personal connection to a higher power, a guiding force that helps shape our decisions, our actions, and our understanding of the world around us. Faith gives us hope in times of uncertainty, strength in times of weakness, and courage in times of fear. But how do these concepts of financial stability and faith interact? Is there a connection between our spiritual beliefs and our financial well-being? It's a question that has been asked for centuries, and the answers can be as diverse as the people asking the question. In our quest for understanding, we turn to a source of wisdom that has guided billions of people for over a thousand years, the Quran. Within its verses, it holds a promise, a promise that suggests a direct correlation between our faith and our financial success. So, what is this promise? And how can it help us balance our financial stability with our spiritual beliefs? These are the questions we'll be exploring in the upcoming scenes. Today we delve into a promise found in the Quran that suggests a direct correlation between faith and financial success. So join us on this journey of discovery as we uncover the profound link between faith and finance. In the Quran, there lies a promise, a promise of financial stability. A promise that resonates in the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, specifically verse 245. The verse reads, Who is it that would loan Allah a goodly loan so he may multiply it for him many times over? And it is Allah who withholds and grants abundance, and to him you will be returned. Now let's take a moment to unpack this verse. It begins with a question, an invitation even, asking who would be willing to give a goodly loan to Allah. The term goodly loan or qad hasan in Arabic refers to a charitable contribution made without any expectation of return. Here the Quran is not just talking about money, it can be any act of kindness, any form of assistance, any contribution that benefits others. The verse then promises that this loan, this act of charity, will be multiplied many times over. In the context of when this verse was revealed, during a time of economic hardship and war, this promise served as a reassurance to those donating in the way of Allah. It gave them hope of a return far greater than what they had given. But how have scholars interpreted this promise? Many agree that the return promised is not strictly material. The multiplication refers to spiritual rewards, blessings and even contentment in this life and the hereafter. It's about the inner peace and satisfaction that comes from helping others, from making a difference. It's about the spiritual wealth we accumulate when we give selflessly. So, the promise is clear. Give in the way of Allah and receive manifold in return. But what does this really mean? The promise, though straightforward, requires a deeper understanding. It's easy to misinterpret the promise as a direct assurance of wealth. However, it's far more nuanced, rooted in spiritual and practical realities that transcend the materialistic view of wealth. At the heart of this promise, lies the concept of baraka, or blessings. In the context of wealth, baraka is the divine goodness that is embedded in our resources. It's not about how much we have, but the value we derive from what we have. It's the ability to do more with less, the peace and satisfaction we feel regardless of our financial status, and the positive impact we can make with our resources. When we invoke this promise, we are not asking for a stack of cash to miraculously appear in front of us. Rather, we are seeking a blessed life, filled with opportunities, contentment, and a sense of fulfillment. We are asking for our resources, however meager they may seem, to be imbued with Baraka. This understanding of the promise shifts our perspective away from the pursuit of wealth for its own sake, towards a more holistic view of prosperity. It's not just about accumulating money, 
but about nurturing a rich life in which our material resources serve as a means to a fulfilling and meaningful end. We see that the promise is not a transactional deal, but a spiritual pact. It involves our active participation in aligning our intentions, actions and resources with higher values and purposes. It's about integrating our spiritual aspirations with our practical endeavours and seeking divine blessings in our journey towards holistic prosperity. This promise also reminds us of the transient nature of worldly wealth. It encourages us to seek a deeper, enduring form of prosperity that is rooted in contentment, gratitude and generosity. So it's not just about gaining more money, but about enriching your life in a holistic manner. It's about embracing the blessings in your life, finding contentment in what you have, and using your resources to make a positive impact. That, indeed, is the true essence of the promise. Knowing about the promise is one thing, but how do we apply it in our lives? Let's delve into the practical side of things now. The promise we've discussed is not a magical formula where you utter certain words and money starts pouring in. It's a divine principle that emphasizes the balance of faith and finance, and to incorporate it in our lives, we need to understand this balance and adopt certain practices. First and foremost, let's talk about charity. Giving to others, especially those less fortunate, is a powerful act of faith. It's not about the amount you give, but the willingness to share what you have. Even a small act of kindness can have a profound impact. So look for opportunities to give. It could be as simple as buying a meal for a homeless person or donating to a cause you believe in. Next, let's look at helping others. This doesn't always mean financial help. It could be lending a hand to a neighbor, volunteering at a local community center, or even helping a stranger on the street. These acts of kindness are investments in your spiritual wealth and they help create a positive ripple effect in society. Investing in good deeds is another practical way to apply the promise. Consider your actions as investments in your spiritual portfolio. Every good deed, no matter how small, contributes to this portfolio. So, strive to be a good person, be kind, be patient, and be generous. These are the investments that yield the highest returns. Lastly, it's crucial to reflect on our financial decisions from a faith-based perspective. Before making a purchase, ask yourself, is this necessary? Is this beneficial to me and others? Am I being mindful of my resources? These questions can help you make more conscious, faith-aligned financial decisions. Remember, it's not just about the act of giving, but the intention behind it. The promise is not a ticket to material wealth, but a path to spiritual richness. It's about cultivating a generous heart, a giving spirit, and a conscious mind. So let's strive to live by this promise, not for the promise of wealth, but for the promise of a richer, more meaningful life. So, where does this leave us in the quest for financial stability and strong faith? The promise in the Quran, as we've discussed, serves as an illuminating guide on this journey. It's not merely about accumulating wealth, but rather about achieving a harmonious balance between our material desires and our spiritual obligations. This equilibrium is the cornerstone of a contented life, a life full of purpose and inner peace. You see, the promise in the Quran isn't a magical formula to instant wealth. It's a call to align our financial decisions with our faith values. It's about understanding that every financial choice we make has spiritual implications. Whether it's how we earn our money, how we spend it, or how we save it, each of these decisions should be guided by the principles of our faith. Trust in Allah's promise is central to this balance. This trust reminds us that while we are responsible for our financial decisions, the ultimate provider is Allah. It's about recognizing that our wealth is not solely the result of our efforts, but a blessing from Allah. This trust liberates us from the fear of financial insecurity because we know that Allah will provide for us, as promised. Aligning our financial decisions with our faith values has profound benefits. It encourages ethical financial practices, discourages excessive materialism, and fosters a sense of contentment. It helps us focus on what truly matters, our spiritual growth, our relationships, and our contributions to society. It reminds us that wealth is not an end in itself, but a means to a more meaningful end, serving Allah and serving humanity. Indeed, the balance between faith and finance is not a destination, but a journey. It's a journey that requires constant reflection, constant adjustment, and constant faith. 
It's a journey that transforms our perspective on wealth and redefines our measures of success. In the end, it's about finding a balance that brings both financial stability and spiritual contentment. It's about embracing the promise in the Quran, living our faith values in our financial decisions, and trusting in Allah's provision. It's about achieving a life of abundance, not just in material wealth, but in spiritual riches too. Be sure to give a like to the video and to get more Islamic videos regularly. Subscribe to our Islamic channel and press the bell icon next to it.